Hello everyone. Are you curious about the unique situation in Montenegro, a republic with an official royal dynasty? If so, you've come to the right place. In today's episode on the Monarchist channel, we'll dive into the history and current status of monarchism in Montenegro. Don't forget to subscribe to TMC for more videos on the monarchist topics. Since the fall of communism in the early 1990s, Eastern Europe has experienced a resurgence of interest in its monarchist past. In countries like Serbia, Montenegro, Hungary, Bulgaria, Romania, Georgia, Albania, royal restoration is not out of the question. In this video, we'll focus on Montenegro, a small Adriatic nation with a rich monarchist history. Montenegro was ruled by prince bishops until Danilo I became prince. His heir from 1910 to 1918 was elevated to the status of King of Montenegro. After World War I, Montenegro was handed over to Serbia as part of creation of Yugoslavia. The last reigning Montenegrin monarch was King Nicholas I, a poet monarch with 12 children. On November the 13th, 1918, Nicholas I was deposed by the Podgorica Assembly, which voted to unite Montenegro with the Kingdom of Serbia under King Peter I Karadjordjevic, who was also married to Nicholas's daughter. King Nicholas never recognized the union between Montenegro and Serbia and maintained a government in exile. The current head of the house, Crown Prince Nicholas is the only son of Michael, the last king in exile. Michael himself is son of Natalia Konstantinovic, one of the descendants of Obrenovic dynasty, through her father Alexander Konstantinovic, a grandson of Yevrem Obrenovic. Before being deposed, Natalia's children has been seen to inherit the throne of Serbia in case King Alexander Obrenovic was childless possibly making Michael a rival to King Peter I of Serbia. For those that don't know, Obrenovic dynasty was one of the two rival royal families in Serbia and rivals to Karadjordjevic dynasty we mentioned earlier. In 2010, the government of Montenegro offered Prince Nicholas a civil list, a formal residence in the capital Setinje and the return of family property. Crown Prince declined this due to the differences over the properties specified. However, in 2011, government of Montenegro recognized an official role for the royal house to promote Montenegrin identity, culture and traditions through cultural, humanitarian and other non-political activities. Membership of the royal house is limited to the male line descendants of the grandfather of King Nicholas, with succession determined by the 1905 constitution of the Principality of Montenegro. The law on status of descendants of the Petrovic Njegoš dynasty governs important issues regarding the status of descendants of the Petrovic Njegoš dynasty. The law states that the descendants guard and affirm Montenegrin traditions in cultural, humanitarian and other non-political affairs and are obligated to respect the integrity and constitutional order of Montenegro. The law also establishes the Foundation Petrovic Njegoš to affirm Montenegrin culture and participate in humanitarian and developmental activities in the public interest of Montenegro and its traditions. The descendants of the dynasty have the right to use certain properties, receive a monthly income and have administrative and technical support from the state protocol. With the new national flag based on the old royal standard and the Montenegrin crown within Prince Nicholas' reach, the question remains. Will he seize the opportunity to restore the monarchy or will it slip away? While the odds seem to be in his favor, the future of the monarchy in Montenegro is still uncertain. 
No polling has been done on the question of restoring monarchy in Montenegro. However, the fact that the Republican Parliament passed the law establishing the dynasty in the Republic, the law that was signed by the President, indicates that support exists. So what are the next steps for monarchists? For monarchists in Montenegro, the next step would be to involve promoting the idea of a restored monarchy, educating the public about the benefits of a constitutional monarchy, and working closely with the royal house to strengthen its presence and influence in the nation. And that wraps up our exploration of the status of monarchism in Montenegro today, a republic with an official royal dynasty. The nation's unique history and current support for the royal house make for an intriguing case study in an ongoing debate on the merits of monarchy. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the Monarchist channel for more Monarchist content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.